lot of businesses use Salesforce. Have you ever thought of how these businesses are handled by Salesforce? So tomorrow, if you are doing, if you are organizing a game, right? If 5,000 people have enrolled into the game, how would you maintain their data? You will create a spreadsheet maybe? You'll create a spreadsheet of those 5,000 people. Now those 5,000 people are given some lottery tickets. So you tag whichever lottery ticket is given to them. Each of them had pay, has paid some amount of money to you. So you put the price amount that everyone has put, right? Now just assume that each customer that has paid you a lottery will be playing a different kind of a game altogether. Now, how do you manage that on a spreadsheet? Right? How do you manage each customer's interaction with the platform? You need an architecture behind it, correct? You need to set up a platform wherein every customer can play their own games and the platform can support that. Now, when I say play their own games is basically help their customers drive value and basically earn revenue. That's the game every business plays, correct? How does Salesforce achieve that? If you take a, if you take a step back from Salesforce and understand, let's say Netflix, how does it show you movies? right there's a database that stores the movies it recommends you certain movies and when you click on play there's a player that shows you the movie with some subtitles some captions right now how does this show movie regional region basis so someone sitting in the uae or someone sitting in india or someone sitting in the us will have different views Someone who's logged in as a single paid user, someone who's a guest user or a free user will have different kind of access to the same platform. The access level would be different. Correct? If you are an Amazon Prime member, you get deliveries within 7 days or 3 days. But if you are a regular member, you might need 14 days. How does the system understand, track, maintain, manage and help customers? That's where the architecture comes into the picture. And here we'll just understand how Salesforce delves or sets up this architecture. All right. So Salesforce groups customers into what is called an instance. All right. These instances are called point of deployments. These point of deployments contain everything an org needs to run. Okay. Now, if you are a customer, if you are a customer who has paid money to Salesforce to procure an org and some licenses, you will be assigned a pod. What is a pod? P-O-D, point of deployment. Now, this point of deployment can be considered, let's say, a remote location where your database, your application and your system server or your file server is stored. That will be assigned to you. Okay. If you are living somewhere, you have an address, correct? You can understand or consider this pod as the address of Salesforce org that we have purchased or that your business has purchased to, to run, correct? So each business or customer is associated to one pod and one pod only and this is where their org resides, right? So if you have paid for an apartment in a specific area, that's where your family lives, correct? Can you live at two places in the same time? Can you put one leg here, one leg there? No. You have one one residence address, correct? One permanent address where you live at one point in time. Similarly, Salesforce org and everything that Salesforce needs to be run is in a specific pod that's called point of point of deployment. And that's nothing but an instance, correct? It's called an instance. If I jump to show you, how do you know what instance your Salesforce is in? This is currently an org I have opened. And if I take a look at company information, I will be able to understand what is my point of deployment? Where am I stored? Where is, where is this org stored? Not me, the org. Take a look at company information. And if I just open this page, a point of deployment is also called an instance. And if you see, it says the instance for your org is AP44. AP stands for Asia Pacific 44. So it's some remote location in somewhere in the Asia Pacific region where my org is stored and where this entire software is stored and I'm just accessing it by username and password. Okay, so instance is AP44. So tomorrow if someone asks, uh, uh, 
where is your uh, org located you can talk about you can say that the instance is this particular value ap44 if you take a look at your business instance right you will see okay this is na na 123 what does that mean that means it's somewhere in north america so they have given this name accordingly if it is usa 45 it is somewhere in the us if it is ap it is asia pacific okay a lot of regions have been defined by salesforce so you can consider that you know salesforce has a lot of buildings in a lot of different regions and each building has a lot of apartments each apartment is basically a pod and that pod contains your org so this is how salesforce is ma ma managing their tenants or their customers in their building you can understand it this way all right now we are saying org we are using the word org but what is an org an org stands for organization right and a salesforce org means a salesforce organization is nothing but one customer's version of salesforce like i said there might be 5000 people playing a game in 5000 different ways how do you manage each version or each game the rules of the game what, what are they allowed to do how do you manage it so each org that has been given to the customer is the customer's version of salesforce and they can do anything with it obviously with limits but they can manage and maintain it on their own for their customers no other person can access it how does it make sense it makes sense because if you have an apartment and you have neighbors can your neighbors access your apartment the way you do it no right so your apartment and the neighbor's apartment have the same amount of beds kitchen hall maybe but the way they look the way they feel the way they would be operated would be completely different and that's what it means with orgs as well the customer's version of salesforce would be different it would vary from customer to customer right but your neighbor and you stay on the same apartment kind of tells you that multiple orgs can be on a same salesforce pod a point of deployment true false it's true which means two different people can be part of the same pod yes they can share a common instance yes they can share a common database yes so how do you identify or how do you distinguish each org that's where the org id comes into the picture and org id is nothing but the organization id and that's how it's uniquely identified if i quickly show you on salesforce on the same company information i showed you the instance and there is something that's called salesforce.com organization id and this 18 digit id is what is the address of this particular org that uniquely identifies it when you live in an apartment what is the unique identifier so how do you i how do i track you i track i track you through a region i i reach an apartment on an apartment i reach a specific floor on that specific floor you might have a specific flat you would have a flat number that is the exact distinguishment i get to reach your address correct similarly to uh, to reach a salesforce org i need to know the instance and then i also need to know the org id because on an instance there could be multiple orgs sitting right and on each org i have a org id that's unique you can consider this as the flat number of the org all right i hope i was able to explain you what is an org and what is the salesforce architecture i have a good re flowchart representation let me let me quickly show you so take a look at this particular representation this is how the salesforce architecture is managed on top you see that there are data centers right you can consider this as a building or probably a, a area that salesforce has to store every customer correct this is where your database would be stored those multifunctional big computers those supercomputers would be stored where your database would be stored the file system would be stored and the orgs would be hosted in very super power computing uh, devices correct so this data center can be a place in asia pacific somewhere in the uae somewhere in the uk us somewhere in the uk or let's say somewhere in japan somewhere in singapore it could be anywhere now that particular data center has multiple pods that is why you see this numbering right you see na44 that means that is the 44th instance or pod under north america data center correct so 
you might not be able to fulfill all the customer's requirement in a single data center. That's why there are multiple data centers, correct? So one builder can make multiple buildings for customers and people to live in, correct? Not everyone can live in the same building, right? You need more buildings, same concept here. So North America data center would have multiple pods or multiple instances, NA1, NA2, NA3, NA44, NA128, how many whatever Salesforce has defined or procured or set up, right? AP, AP5, AP35, AP164, that is Asia Pacific pods. Now each pod or each Asia Pacific pod can now host multiple orgs. So those orgs have their own org ID. So if you take a look at this diagram, you can, you can relate it with a builder making a building in a specific place. Or let's say there's one builder who has a lot of buildings in, in a region. So those buildings are pod one, pod two, pod three. Each building has different customers or people who live in it, org one, org two, org three. Each customer or each tenant is identified by their flat number, correct? That is the org ID here. So you see, you understand the data center, North America, pod one, pod two, pod three, North America one, NA2, NA44, NA144, and each pod has multiple orgs in it. That's how Salesforce manages all the customers version of Salesforce through these data centers. I hope I was able to make sense. Yeah. Is this information necessary for an admin administrator? No. Is this information necessary for a developer? No. Is this information necessary for an architect? Yes. An architect should know. Correct. If you're a Salesforce architect, you should know. So if a Salesforce architect should know, why should not a developer or an admin should know this? They should also know this. It's good information, right? Tomorrow, if you have to talk to people on Salesforce, this is a very good information you can talk about and it gives you an edge that, yeah, you understand the underlying framework of Salesforce, how Salesforce has become Salesforce. Correct? It's important. So don't think about that. Okay, why is this lecture only theoretical? Why are we not jumping into custom code? We'll do all of it. But like I said, my idea is to help you build the foundation, come into writing code, get you confident in writing code, and then probably release you. Yeah, that was about the architecture behind Salesforce.